Thanks, Angela. So good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst, and we welcome you to this meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee, the Subcommittee on Design. And it is 10.01, and I am turning this meeting over to the chair of this design subcommittee, Christine Gray Mullen. And this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the town's YouTube channel at a later date. Thank you. Uh, welcome all. Again, today, uh, June 16th, 10 a.m., Design Subcommittee for the Jones Library Building Committee. I'll do a little roll call just to make sure that everybody is here and we can hear each other. Um, uh, Sharon Shari. Here. And George. Here. And we don't have Austin. He will be showing up soon, hopefully in the next few minutes. Um, we also have Craig, Craig DiCarlo from Colliers, our OPM. Hello. And uh, we will start. So um, I have so, the file now. Oh, that's good. Excellent. So we're for, um, and Angela, I don't believe we have uh, June third minutes. I don't think so. I I've seen a. Last meeting on the 16th, we approved the May 27th. No, no pressure. I just, I haven't seen them, so we're not going to do them today. Um, we'll okay. do that at the next meeting. We've been having meetings almost like every week. So it's a little, I'll show there's a backlog. Um, so I'm going to skip that and I'm going to go to item three um, with our OPM and we're going to go over the comments. So this is sort of round two of public comments. It's an ongoing process of collecting them. And as our outreach committee would tell you, there's hundreds and hundreds, but we've got this first chunk um, and we did uh, the first group last month and we forward them to the designers. And this is a second group of important, but they're less pressing right now in schematic design uh, comments, uh, meaning that the decisions for a lot of these comments will be made um, right away and over the next few months. So we have those and there's a spreadsheet and um, Sharon Shari has to leave the meeting today at 10.15. So she's only with us for another 10 minutes. Um, so we're gonna have Craig drive uh, and show his uh, screen with the um, spreadsheet. Craig, if you wanna bring that up and roll it down to, there's like four highlighted ones. Hang on, yeah. can I stop you? I'm so sorry, yeah. you guys. Before, Craig, Craig, can you stop sharing yeah. for a minute? I'm so sorry. No problem. Um, <laughs> hi, so I just, I wanna talk a little bit, I, I, I wanna give some backstory on the Civil War tablets. And um, uh, so before I leave, um, so before we go through the spreadsheet, I just want to take a minute to update everyone on the town Civil War tablets. Okay, um, can so I just announce to Angela then, then we're just, because of you are leaving, we're going to jump later in the agenda to item four topics not anticipated in 48 hours. And so you have the floor under that. Okay. And then we'll go back to three. Just <laughs> Well, this will make sense. It does have to do with the spreadsheet. It'll, it'll make sense in a minute. So I wanna give you some background. And this is from my point of view, my experience on this project and with, with the tablet. So way back in 2014, town manager Musanti asked the trustees if the Civil War tablets could be hung in the existing Jones Library. And after a, a lot of research and thought, discussions, it was decided that having the tablets hung in the Jones before the expansion renovation project didn't make sense because the only option was in the Woodbury room, but because so many groups use that room for meetings and events, it, 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 didn't, it didn't look like it could work because that space is too small. Once you put the tablets in, they have a, you know, once you hang them on the walls, they have quite the, the profile. Um, so, so the space is, was just too small for that. So everyone agreed, the town library trustees, that once the library was expanded, a really nice space could be set aside on the walls outside of the expanded special collections department. So that way everyone coming to the library would be able to see them, interpretive and interactive materials would be purchased and displayed alongside the tablets. Professional library staff would be overseeing them and answering questions. 
the tablets would be safe from the weather and they would be available during all the open hours of the library. And it would be the most cost effective way to preserve and display these important town artifacts. But so fast forward to today, we, during this racial reckoning and a pandemic, times and thoughts and ideas have changed. The town is now funding a CRESS program, a DEI department, and the town now has a working group, which didn't exist in 2014, a working group for uh, the tablets, it oversees the tablets and oversees the future of the tablets. The tablets are now being professionally curated by a family member, Deborah Bridges. So, so many things have changed since 2014. The working group is now asking the town for a dedicated room, not just a galleria. So unfortunately for the tablets and us, the schematics are almost complete. The architects are moving at a very fast rate in order to meet all of our deadlines and decisions have to be made quickly. Our square footage is set, the budget is set, and the only way a room can be created for these tablets in the library is by taking away space from another library program element. And so how is any of this relevant to, today, to today's discussion? Because under our approved process, the change from a galleria to a room should have been added to this spreadsheet and then voted on by this design committee and then sent to the JLBC for a vote and then to the architects. But this process would have taken weeks and it's weeks we don't have. The architects and the tablets working group, they need an answer as soon as possible. So I asked the architects outside of our normal process to carve out a room for the tablets. In doing so, they had to take square footage away from the special collection storage space. And, and they were able to make the special collections exhibit space larger. So this compromise is not ideal. It will limit the amount of materials that the special collections department will be able to collect and conserve in the future. I do hope that more conversations will occur within the JLBC meeting to talk about this compromise and decide if it's the best solution. And why is any of this important? So as many of you know, our special collection department is really, it's quite white. The fine arts collection is white. It just doesn't adequately represent the town of Amherst. And one of the many reasons for expanding the size of our special collections department is to be able to have room to diversify our collection. But by making the storage space smaller, it's gonna limit what we can collect in the future. So I, I wanted you all to have this background of the tablets. Again, this is my point of view. It, it's such an important topic and I'm really, I wanna do right by this community. So that is why I, I went outside of the process and um, I apologize to my, my fellow um, design committee, uh, to all of you. Um, it, was, it was a decision that I made kind of on the spot feeling, pressure and concern from, from so many different so many different constituencies. So that's how we ended up where we are today. And the, the architects will be showing us um, their, their new designs on the 24th. So we'll be able to see it and, and make changes and you know, talk about it. And certainly moving into design development, more changes can happen there. So it's not a final, it was just a, a faster step forward so that the community, the, the the tablets working group could see what the possibility is. So thank you, Christine, for giving me this moment. Um, I have five minutes to go over <laughs> comments, 141 and 176. Thank you. And thank you for that update. Um, yeah, sounds like a lot's going on and you're right. We're really getting tight on time here. So we'll, we'll get to see those new designs on the 24th at the full, uh, no, at this, at our next meeting um, here. So, okay, great. Um, Craig, if you can share that spreadsheet and uh, if Sharon, uh, you've got five minutes here. So uh, if you roll down Craig to where uh, the comment number is highlighted, that's where we'll start. Um, so if Sharon, if you could just describe where those highlighted ones came from, where they got added in or moved and then if you could just, we're gonna to jump to comments 141 and 176. So okay. take it away. So today we're just going through, as Christine just said, the uh, lines two through 
138. And so if you look under review date, um, it, uh, the very first column, column A, I'm sorry. Yeah, so everything highlighted in the orange is what we're gonna be talking about today. There yes. are comments up at the top that aren't highlighted. Uh, and it's because those are things what that are already in the, I'm, I'm led, oh, they have to do with programming as opposed to the designer. I see NA designer. That means not applicable to the designer. Yes. Um, so that's why they're white. So we're going to be going through uh, lines 47 through 148 today. And specifically Correct. before I leave, so what you guys are going to do is, again, column D, um, but those are comments that we agree with, but we don't need to send it to FAA because they're already in the works. Column E, those are, are the comments that we agree with and, and, and you all that I agree with and, and you all can agree with me. Um, <laughs> but those are the things that we'll want to send over to the building committee to also vote to send to FAA. Uh, the items in F, uh, those were the items that I was kind of unclear about, or I said maybe that I thought this committee should talk about and decide whether or not they wanted in the or in uh, green or the red column. And then there's the items in the red column. There are very few of those. Those were the items that I, I didn't agree with um, that, that should move forward. So Christine asked me to specifically look at comment number 141. Craig, can you show me that number? Just why are those four highlighted, Sharon? Oh, they are different from the ones you saw in your packets. They were added after the fact. Okay, so we can go back to those. But thank you for yeah. telling us. Yeah. That way. Wait, you've gone too far. Oh, gone too far. 141. Oh, oh uh, item 141. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Item comments. Oh, I was glad that Christine asked me this. So I put agree. But really not knowing why I should put it agree, this is really a question for uh, Craig. Uh, the north, uh, so that would be the, the windows facing the CVS lot and the west would be facing the strong house. Windows smaller and triple glazed. Um, it's funny, I definitely, I computed the triple glazed. I hope that we can end up affording that. Um, but I don't know about the smaller. What, I don't know what smaller means. Um, so I guess that's for you guys to talk about. So it's a yes for the triple glaze, but kind of an unsure for the smaller windows. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I'm in favor of all that natural light, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm not an architect. I'm not a sustainability professional. So what, what is the happy medium? Okay, thank you for Claire, and we'll discuss it after you're gone. I know you've got like one minute left. Thank so you. Then and 176, comment, comment 176, you can see there. Oh, okay, uh, open during all hours of library operations. So it's not, It's that's one of the things that's really not applicable to the designers. Um, we need more staffing uh, for yeah. that to happen, and and we're, we're in process. Uh, so that's why I put agree, yes, that's exactly what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure when it will be able to happen, but it, it's not relevant to the FAA discussion. Okay, great, right. Because it's more of a staff. I yeah. mean, because truthfully, if you had endless staff, you'd have the library open as a whole open more and more and yeah. right, it's a balance. Okay, just Thank wanted you. to clarify. Great, so the rest I think, uh, hopefully we'll know what you mean. It seems pretty clear. Uh, and I want to mention we have Austin with us. Welcome, Austin. You're there. I see you're muted, but um, so let the minutes Thank reflect. <laughs> Great, thanks. Uh, that um, Austin is here and Sharon will be leaving us. So, Thank you, everybody. Uh, Take care. Okay. Great. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay. Hi, Austin. And so it's uh, Austin and George and I and Craig. He is sharing his screen. If we could roll back up to those highlighted ones and we can start there. So we'll do this um, kind of the same way as we did before, except Sharon did more explaining. I probably won't. I'll read the, um, the comment and uh, say whether it's uh, uh, agree maybe or disagree. 
And then please, Austin or George or Craig, speak up if you disagree. Um, and I'll try to watch hands, but also, you know, raise your hand. I mean, speak up. Like, so you guys, if you want, you can go off off mute or whatever. Um, so uh, we'll start with comment. It's uh, row 47 of the spreadsheet. Uh, this one, um, Austin, you may not know this. We have these six highlighted ones are new to what came in on our packet or what we're given. Uh, Sharon added these. Um, so we're gonna uh, go over those and then it goes back to what we received. So uh, these six don't match uh, if you're looking at your own personal spreadsheet, if you make comments on it. So uh, row 47, comment. Uh, 326 is highlight existing 1928 walls in a darker gray on the schematics. And that makes sense. Oh, I don't know if it has to be gray, but just to make it more visible. Um, so I agree with Sharon. I don't see any hands or anything. Uh, 327, show round tables in the team collaborative space. Are they currently round right now, Craig? Um, I do not recall uh, off the top of my head. Uh, I, could, I don't either. Yeah. I could open up the latest set, but I don't know that I move, if, if we... No, you don't have... My question was more, I just remember on our library tours, it was children's rooms, but they were talking about how none of them are into round tables because of the inflexibility of like moving them together and abutting them and that kind of thing. So that's why I was surprised at this. Like, so I didn't know if I wanted to agree, like, do we even want round tables? But you know more about this than I would. Yeah, I think the, in particular, you're referring to um, the Woburn Public Library um, in, their, in their children area. They had sort of crescent shaped tables. They were almost circular. And one of the, some of the, feedback we got uh, from the librarians and staff there were that, you know, they were not super flexible, that either rectangular or triangular shaped tables allow for more configurations. The round was kind of um, limited in how many configurations were possible. So that was my only thing. I didn't want to commit to round tables on this comment. I don't know if we should, and I, again, we don't remember what's on the design, but. Um, Cause Dan, I think you should yeah. just, you should highlight this or move it into a, a question, put a question around it. This is really a case where uh, the library staff is gonna really play a critical role. They'll be able to tell us pretty clearly whether or not they think round tables are gonna are, are, gonna, are gonna work. And this is not a design issue that needs to be resolved at this point. That is a good point. And that reminded me that a lot of the comments in here have to do with the, um, the outdoor land uh, space behind the library and next to the library. And um, as we go through these, uh, Craig, if you could make like two, right now, two lists, one of like, internal decisions that we made later, like this one's furniture, so it's much later. And then there's a bunch of questions that all have to do with what will be contemplated later on landscaping and finishing the, the area around the library. Is that all right, Craig? Uh, you're saying sort of within within this? Yeah, like uh, make a separate list like, like that we will, so we'll remember down the road, like, cause some of these questions, we're not dealing with the outside landscaping. Like, is there like a box, uh, you know, or a fountain or outdoor, you know, what to do with the outdoor space, but we should gather those questions and you could do it in the spreadsheet if we mark them and you could sort them. Anyways, to me that we're visiting these comments now, but they won't really be considered again till far later down the road. In the case of outdoor, it could be years. Um, and then even the furniture that's down the road. Um, so I just don't want these comments to be lost, especially the ones that uh, all have are similar. What you're like, suggesting can be easily done, right, Craig? You can say- Yes, yeah, that's what- In terms of furnishings, in terms of uh, exterior things, 
you don't need to do it right now. No. But, but maybe yes. in the maybe in the future we could do that. But may I just make a procedural yeah. suggestion? If we're going to yes. get to these comments, we've got to be moving through these comments. We're going to move through them fast. This is just about sort of setting up how we're going to handle them, and then we can rattle through because we can say then just put it on the outdoor list or whatever. So okay, and that one. Sorry to oh, to speak yeah. to that. Um, um, Alex has you know, has taken a crack at, or between Alex and I, we've taken a crack at categorizing each of them. So, yep. you know, so like this bocce court is a design of grounds. Both That's that. true. So good point. There, there are some, sort on those. There are some things that are, you know, the, the bigger ideas, the bigger concepts would be good to give the design team direction on earlier in the process. Um, but then there are smaller, so this, round table is a perfect example. That is certainly something that can be decided later. Um, right. So we can kind of put that off to the side, maybe sort of table it, <laughs> table the round tables, but table that discussion for when we're meeting, when the design team's meeting with the library staff talking right. about furniture, they can pull out this subset and say, okay, these are the comments we got from the public, you know, library staff, you know, what are your thoughts, what are your reactions? And, you know, kind of incorporate that, those public comments into that discussion. Excellent. And as you point out, maybe it that it's uh, column K is the one that needs to be filled out for these new add ons that Sharon mm -hmm. put in. So and you you're familiar with them. So I see design of grounds, but yeah, furnishings. There you go. Great. OK, so uh, 328. Is there enough wall space on the first floor gallery community display space? Agreed. I don't see it. Speak up. I you don't. 329, remove the word, quote, cafe in the first floor gathering space. Agreed. Um, I mean, cafe does make, if the public was looking at these, not knowing what we're talking about, they might think that an actual like coffee shops are going in there. But Craig, what architectural word, I mean, we don't, I don't, you know, we should put, it needs to be labeled something. So that I guess has to go to the designers. Yeah, I, I think forwarding this comment to them, um, you know, they can come up with an appropriate term that does not yeah. imply food is served here, but right. rather food is welcome to be Could be here. served there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, uh, number 330, can we swap the bathrooms with the Burnett Art Gallery on the garden level agreed? I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Do you know what that means, Craig? Yes, my interpretation is the position of the, they're talking about swapping the positions. So that right okay. now the, the, the group toilets are closer to, so that, that ground floor main entry and the Burnett gallery is further. And I think they're saying, the comment means, can we flip those and move the bathrooms further into the interior and move the Burnett gallery closer to the, the main entrance. And so that's something that certainly Michael Alexander can look into um, to see how feasible it is and what the other implications are. Excellent, thank you. 331, can you show the exterior walks on the garden and first floor levels? Agreed. So hopefully they can do that. Uh, now we're back to what our original list, 248 teens after hours exit for after hours programming. Um, Craig, do you have any more insight on that? I mean, it sounds good, but I know there's fire doors and alarms and. So I believe this is something that has been discussed. Uh, the design team working with Sharon has talked about, I do not know where it stands. Um, okay. I, I, my recollection, which is imperfect at best, is that there, there were, Feingold Alexander was looking into making a way that the teens could exit after hours. There would be, you know, library staff supervision, but then they wouldn't have to go through the, the main building. Rather, that portion of the building could remain open longer, essentially. And then at the end okay. of the night, they can, they can leave directly to the exterior. So I think I agree with the agree if possible. And okay. that goes to the designers. Okay, I don't see any hands or speak up. Uh, so number one, pump track 
I have, I also, do you have any idea what that is? That is, that is a bike. That is a bicycle course. It's basically, uh, if you think about BMX bikes, <gasps> how they have like the raises and the lowers and the stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, in my opinion, that's not something that is going to be feasible in the space, but that can be tossed down the road to when we start designing the landscaping and exterior. We'll add it to the list that you're right. Okay. So it's in design. So, uh, okay. There we go. That's fine. Good comment. All right. Uh, number three, bocce courts. That's sort of the same exterior same. for down the road, figuring out what to do outside. Four, preserve the trees. Agree. Yes. Um, as much as they possibly can. Five, I love the wandering designs with nooks for reading and talking. Um, I think that's already being incorporated. Agreed. Six, areas for little kids to explore and play. Um, that agreed. Eight, walking labyrinth. I think that goes into that same discuss later. Uh, nine, keep the kindergarten. Um, Sharon has disagree, which I agree. I think that ship sort of already sailed. Um, 12, a community garden space. We can do that same table. Yeah, she has unclear disagree. I mean, I think that's having community, you know, um, the community be able to garden on their own. I don't think that's exactly, I don't think there's much room. It's the north side anyways, but yeah, just put it, I say, leave it in disagree and table discussion. Yes, and I, I think um, speaking kind of uh, higher level, you know, the, the library does have a nice piece of property, but it is of limited size. And some of these concepts and ideas are great and would be a lot of fun way to bring people to the yeah. library for other activities. But at least some of these are pretty large. And so it may be yeah. a decision of, okay, which one of the, we like all of these. Pump track yeah. would be awesome. A bocce court would be awesome. Community garden space, same thing. But which one does the, is going to get that space, which is at a premium. And that's a discussion that can be had uh, a little bit down the road. Down the road. And there's a lot of good ideas in here. And you're right, it's down to space. So, okay. Uh, number 13, garden entrance should have clear sight lines and you should feel safe, agreed. Uh, number 14, pollinator garden. There's another one for the table for outdoor discussion. Um, 15, prioritize green spaces. Uh, and I guess that's an outdoor one too. Uh, 16, bike, lock area agreed that should already be in there 17 uh outdoor chess ch okay that's the same thing Ta another choice for the outdoors and number 18 outdoor sculpture garden same thing 19 garden and for people waiting to enter library and to get in from parking lot to entrance uh agreed i think they do have somewhat of an overhang but the designer should give a hard look on that. Uh, 37, um, sensory friendly spaces, agreed. And I think, isn't that already being addressed by the designers? I believe there was another set of comments from the previous go around where, um, yes, we talked about having spaces that would be appropriate for folks with sensory issues or desiring a kind of quieter, calmer uh, environment. Um, so I, I kind of think um, 19 and 37, they're in the green, but I think they should be in the D, like already addressed. If anyone disagrees, speak up. Um, number 39, seating areas that provide sense of security and feeling of safety, uh, like for those suffering from PTSD. Um, I agree. Uh, 30, uh, 74, Active areas, unclear, agree. Active areas. Uh, anyone have an idea what that was under? Design of interior, active areas. My I, guess is that they're talking, you know, a library typically is quiet. Reserve, you know, the, the stereotypes is that you go there quiet. And um, what modern day libraries do have programs that are more active, involved, and collaborative. And so my take on just those two words is that 
they are a, this person is a proponent for that latter more modern model like maker spaces or the children's activity room right anything where, where people, people are interacting yeah. with each other versus just kind of nose in a book okay so i think we can change I don't know if we should leave the unclear, leave the agree. And if anyone wants to put a specific comment in, uh, we can, but uh, so 30, uh, 93, ESL computers in study rooms, agree. Christine, I don't know if yeah. I agree, yeah. but I, I wanna go back to active areas, put a question. Yeah. I have no idea what it references. And I think Craig just did a great job of trying to come up with something, but put a question mark. We've got, we've got to figure out what it really means before we can agree with it. And I just don't have a clear sense of what it means. Then can we move the whole thing into the maybe column then? Because I don't want to send this to the, yeah. the whole committee is that we agree on something we don't even know what it means. All right, thanks. Thanks, Austin. Um, so ESL, uh, if that one's all right, uh, 101, chairs near windows, agreed. 102, airy, inspiring uh, space, um, agreed. 109, water bottle filling stations, agreed. Craig, that's not already in there. Um, I don't know that the design team has gotten to that level of granularity. Uh, okay. Picking specific water fountain uh, models that have water filling, but but they are quite common and uh, having yeah. this here will just be a reminder that is designed. Okay. And same with the next one, 110 charging stations. I would think that that's part of the new So charging charger yeah. stations, I guess um, we interpreted that this was on the interior that people would have places that they could charge their personal devices electronic devices yeah. but now that i'm seeing it again i'm wondering if maybe they're talking about electric vehicles oh lord but um, um if if the comment is about interior that's something that is desirable and can be incorporated yeah i assumed it was the internal since it said furnishings but that is that was yeah that hmm. was our between alex and i that was our stab at you know what category this one falls into for that one change it to the i would put it back in the maybe for discussion unclear like a question mark like what austin said last just like a question mark and say you know in indoors or outdoor interior exterior um i do i do want to make a note that yeah. um because we are pursuing an electric vehicle to replace the van uh, that I had made mention that we will need a charging station outside of the uh, maintenance shed area. So I don't know if this is the place to make a note of that, but um, but that's definitely in the plan for the future. Good to know. All right, so let's leave it in there for unclear me further discussion. If you can just add that in there too, Craig, and then we're good. Okay, so then 114, playground, outdoor story time connected to children's room. Agreed, I think that's being worked on. 116, local hero wall, maybe. Um, I think that goes to that table for later discussion, exterior, design the ground. Oh, oh, and here it's tagged under interior, but that could be interior or exterior, couldn't it be? One of the libraries that you visited has a local hero's wall on the inside. That was the- But it could be on the outside too. That so was, maybe that, we should say maybe in further discussion inside or outside. Thank you. Uh, 117 indoor plantings. Um, library director said disagree. I am assuming because it's uh, maintenance. George, do you have any idea on this one? Uh, yeah, I tend to agree with that. Okay. It's not that we don't like plants, it's that they're hard to take care of. And we also, yeah, you know, it's, it's also certain people have allergies to certain plants and things ah. like that. Um, I think it's also a liability thing. You also don't okay. want, you know, children potentially eating oh, indoor plantings, stuff like that. That's why there aren't as many in malls anymore. Huh. Wow. Kids will eat anything. <laughs> 2018. Teen, more welcoming space. Agreed. That's 
120 expand reference section and as a comment the collection size will be reduced but the area for the uh, for computers and seating will increase um, so i agree with that um, 122 areas with pillows bag shag carpet and couches for reading uh, comment is agreed couches only in kids room uh, 126, improve appearance of building from garden entry view, agree. 129, free lockers outside for folks who need them, maybe for hold pickups. Yeah, I, design of grounds, uh, free lock. Does anyone have any examples of where libraries are doing that? I don't know. So I guess we can leave that for the uh, that later discussion, outdoor exterior grounds. Okay, 133, ceiling fans. <laughs> I couldn't help but think about, this must be in response to how hot it gets under the atrium currently. <laughs> and a fan would feel good, but I don't know. I, Craig, any feelings on that? I mean, would the designers be thinking about fans or are they just, not needed now with modern HVAC? It, so as part of their uh, discussions with their mechanical engineer, they'll develop a plan for conditioning the entire building. And the goal is to make it as comfortable as possible. And air movement does, slow air movement is a comfortable thing. It allows you know your the heat generated by your body to move, move away from you and, and kind of stirs up the space. But I would leave it to the, the design team with their mechanical engineers to propose a system um, and there may be parts of the building that they do um, recommend fans ceiling fans um, specifically kind of like these large industrial ones um, <laughs> which are pretty cool and actually do work and save energy but maybe we, we leave it to them to propose something yeah so should we move that out of maybe and put it I don't want to just say we, like we want them, but may uh, just I put them under agree per the designer. I think you ought to leave it right where it is. Just leave okay. it right where it is. I mean, this is at a level of detail that uh, neither you nor I are really able to speak to because uh, I think what Craig says is uh, this is part of an HVAC system. Let's leave it for maybe and see what the designers say. I like what Craig's done there and just put it that it's the designer team's decision rather than for us to describe, uh, discuss later or something like that. So yeah, great. Thanks, Austin. 134, solar panels, agree. Uh, 136, natural materials, wool carpet, non-toxic adhesive, uh, marlonium, um, agreed. 137, drain storm water collection, agreed. Uh, I think they have to do that, but 141 north and west facing windows, smaller and triple glaze. So this is what um, Sharon discussed with us earlier. Um, Austin, I, I don't know, were you here for that discussion? I, I was, and I, okay. uh, again, I think this is a, for me, this is a maybe because they need to look at the whole, way the whole system is going to work and triple glazing on those windows may be appropriate because of their location. I take it that reducing the size was also driven by concerns about conservation, but I think we, mm -hmm. we need to we need to wait and see about this. I, I my my own view is not. Uh, I don't think we want smaller windows, but again, I would be interested in uh, talking with the designers about this particular suggestion. Thank you. I completely agree with you. 143, thanks, Craig. Self checkout, agreed. 145, scanner and slides. Um, this is another one of those two part. The scanner, I, I, of course, I strongly believe there need to be scanner, if not multiple scanners, but the and slides, does anyone have an idea? I don't know if they mean about scanning photographic slides or anyone know what that is? I don't see. That's okay. what I interpret it to be. Yeah. With um a scanner for digitizing paper documents as well as a slide scanner obviously for digitizing That's slides yeah regardless i think it's a programming issue and not a design issue uh, 
It, it is. Um, so it's under furnishing. So we'll change it to agreed and yeah, or. Yeah. NA design, uh, agreed. I think we just agree and it goes into the furnishings. Okay, well, I thanks. Don't, I don't, I don't well, agree. I, I don't agree. I, I think what, what George was saying was that this is, this is not for us to be talking about right now. This is a programming issue. So I might agree, well, I might not agree, but I don't think we want to be talking to our architects about whether we have scanners and slide for, for slides. How do we phrase, hold on, I'm just going to quickly go up to the top here. NA, not applicable for the designer. And yeah, I, maybe that's where it has to go that we could say we agree, but it's not applicable for the designer because the same thing on the next one, 146 3D printer, of course I would wanna see if not one multiple 3D printers, but that's not a designer issue. So the, the one thing I would, the one caveat I would put on that is um, I think also at the Woburn Library, they pointed out, they made, a, uh, point of saying, hey, look at that piece of casework or uh, cabinetry. It had to be made much bigger. Um, the design team did not, that design team did not realize there was a huge piece of uh, equipment that was, had something to do with, it was in their makerspace, had something to do with a uh, digital printer or something of that sort. It was something to do with the ventilation of it. Right. And, and, and they needed a, they had enough room for the, the hood. Duct. they didn't have enough room for the duct and the equipment. Um, yep. So I guess, Again, this is more, I think it should be tabled for maybe a technology slash, um, you know, casework or cab, you know, um, cabinet discussion with the design team. If there are specific things that the library knows they want, like, all right, we've got these, this particular model of technological equipment. So, so perhaps it's, you know, table for a, so maybe this is a third like list that we're talking about that will be, cause you said they're not that granular yet where they're probably like designing the size of the countertops. But right. when they get to that point, we're back to the scanner. So I, you know, it, it, there needs to be a, you know, really large scanner and the 3D and other tech quit. All right, so Craig, figure that out, make for further discussion for the technology needs for furnishings. All right, great, thanks. And then uh, 152, greenest buildings are those already built, disagree, which I agree with. Um, 154, be thoughtful about integrating appearances of library and parking. Six, repurposed would work if possible, if not being used in renovated design, agreed as design allows. Historic priorities, stone exterior, one agreed as design allows. 173, historic priorities, oak trees, agreed as design allows. 176, special collections open during all hours of library operation. Um, I mean, ideally, this is more of a staff issue. Yeah, library operations, I think. So that's more about how much staff um, the director has when the library is actually open. You just want to um, change that. It's not for us. Yeah. Yeah, change it to, yeah, it's say, yeah. Maybe put it under maybe and, you know, per staff allowance. <laughs> Um, it's not for, uh, I'm sorry, it's not it's for staff. us. This is not a building committee issue. This is a library director um, thing. It's, it's, it's not for us. So uh, up the top, how did, how did we do it up the top, Craig, where we identify it as not a, somewhere we have in that first column, we put NA designer or whatever. Right. If you go way up the top right, if you cut and paste from, there you go, right there. Uh, was that, was that- See the in comment? the first column. Will be review with library staff? This there? Or, 
not applicable to designer. Yeah, see all of those, those are the ones that she, um, they're not just, so. Oops, wrong. Okay. Where Where is close. It? There it is. <laughs> Okay, great. So 177, library should be cultural center of town, agreed. 186, teens vending machine, uh, agreed. 187, teen string lights, LED lights, agreed. 189, teen snacks, agreed, part of, as part of programming. 196, teens 3D printer. 197, teens fish tank, disagree. So the 3D printer was however we addressed it before with the, yeah, the technology discussion for later. And the fish tank is a no. And the mini fridge, that's 1919 uh, mini fridge was a disagree. And I'm fine with that. Anyone else speak up if you disagree. Uh, 200 teens VR headsets agreed. Uh, 205 teens booth style seating agreed. 206 teens tall cafe style seating agreed. 207 teens hammock. This is a maybe something that would give <laughs> the same effect but safe. So I guess that's a later discussion. That would also need a lot of space, like the technology need. Um, I assume with the hammock, you need quite a bit of space. 209 teens TV, which I hope they don't mean TV. I hope they mean screens, um, but agreed. 213 outdoor gathering spaces behind the library or on the, on, on the, on the museum, outdoor gathering spaces behind the library on the museum side, agreed. 214 teen. Teen art displayed on walls, changed monthly, agreed. 217, a fountain for the garden, lemonade in the summer and hot chocolate in the winter. Um, Sharon, but maybe, I think she just means for the fountain in the garden, <laughs> but that will be discussed. That's part of that outdoor um, space discussion. 218, don't go nuts. Even an extra 10 by 10 of landscaping equals a lot of money. Even quote, natural materials have carbon costs, i.e. processing, finishing, and transporting stones used in landscaping. Ag agreed. Um, That's design of grounds. I, I I agree, but I think that can you stick that comment in the maybe the maybe for future landscape discussion because that's where it would all be discussed and not now. Two 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 children's two tables and some chairs and some bookshelves of toys for kids. Agreed. Already being addressed. Uh, two two three children's uh, choir or band. Agreed as part of programming. 225, a few chairs under trees and with flowers and a new bench. Agreed. Uh, oh, that's another one for the discussion. Yeah. Uh, 230, teen desks for working. Yes, they still have homework to do. Agreed. Uh, 232, parking on same side of street with well-marked entrance from lot in parentheses, CVS question mark, possibly free parking. Um, when do when does parking get discussed? Because I know that's an outdoor exterior space, but like the gardening and landscaping is later. When would discussions with parking have to happen? Craig? I would say so right now the design team is obviously focusing on the building. Yeah. Um, I would, but they've already made some assumptions, I presume, in their schematic design set is going to have to get a good cost estimate. They've already got some assumptions baked in there about how much is hardscape, how much is uh, softscape, you know, uh, sort of the general scope. Um, so if there is, so to the extent that we can give some direction on what is desired or you know, the, the site, um, 
that is, you know, now would be a good time to do that. Um, especially if it has to do with something like major infrastructure like this, a bench here or a tree there, not as impactful to the cost estimate. But if there, if we say a large portion of the property wants to be at the back of the site, uh, that would be something that they should know now. Okay, so there's a few parking ones here, but th this one, well marked, this doesn't have to be dealt with till later and free parking would be more what the library and the town decides to do later. So this isn't something that needs to go to the designer, I assume at this point, but the next one parking number 233 parking more accessible to me that should go to the designer. So right now, you guys, correct correct me if I'm wrong, so you've got that strip um, of asphalt that goes from the Amity Street down to, there's like a garage in back. <clears throat> are, there, are there any parking spots? I think maybe a couple parking spots on that. Uh, yeah, there's, but they are staff only parking spaces okay. with the exception of two handicapped spots. Okay, and then you've got parking on is there parking on the street? Is it like a, a where the curb jogs in, or is yeah, that just a pickup drop off? It's no, it's pu it's town public parking. Okay, all right. So perhaps this comment is asking for, you know, you've got the two handicap spots. Perhaps they are in, indicating that they would like more of that. I think we don't know what they're indicating, and the issue of parking is not just for us. So we have to look at our parking in relationship to the town's lots, one right across the street from us and the, the CVS lot. As I read this, it wasn't about handicap spaces. It was about making park more parking. But again, I don't know what it particularly, what it particularly means. And um, as part of the design activity, we're gonna have to make sure that we have adequate parking for people coming to the, to the library. Uh, that's, part of what MBLC is going to be looking for. True. So Craig, if I, along with like the technology discussion, they'll probably down the road have to be a specific parking discussion where more players are at the table to talk about all the different uh, types of parking that could be or are available. Okay, that's the two parking ones. 242, seniors reading to grandkids agreed as part of programming. 240. Outside, very heavy handed, needs lighter materials. Um, Sharon put agreed here. Um, if that's okay, we can leave. I mean, is that the message we're sending to the designer? Um, we are discussing exterior exterior um, materials right now. Okay, 249, parent and child. Um, Christine, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't understand what is being referenced with very heavy handed. Uh, I don't know why Sharon agreed to it. I don't know what it means, so. Yeah, I don't either. I'm glad you spoke up. Um, so, I think that's what uh, the larger our committee will be discussing as we just talk about how the building is clad and covered. Okay, thanks, Craig. Um, computer workstations along an enclosed safe play space for babies and toddlers. Uh, agreed, um, 251. Children's, sorry, children's return, ex, return experiments box outside of library as part of programming. Oh, that must be what, to return like toys and not bigger than books. Um, 254, teens, game, space, agreed. 255, teens, no tech space in library. Um, elsewhere in town and Sharon disagreed, unclear. I'm also unclear and I think I disagree. Um, does everyone else agree with the disagree? 
Okay, 256, waterfall or fountain. Um, and that's design of grounds. Maybe we just put that one, Craig, also in the, for further discussion. Um, there we go. <laughs> Okay, 257, cafe. Note, cafe food can be challenges for folks with severe allergies. Library will be not providing food under D. Um, though that's not totally, earlier we did have one like about teen snacks and it said it would be part of library programming. Um, There we are. Agreed as part of programming. So the library does serve, provide food, but they won't be selling food. Uh, I mean, I think we just agree with it. Like we agree that thought needs to, I mean, it's a programming thing needs to be People with allergies need to be considered when they're providing food, meaning this don't- comment references yeah. specifically the cafe. We are not providing food in a cafe. Right. So you don't have to fool with it. You don't have to do anything with it. We're, it references the cafe. We're not, have, we don't, we're not supplying food in a cafe. But earlier we said to remove the word cafe. So like we're going round robin here. Christine. The yeah. answer to this one is no, we are not providing food in a cafe. So we don't have to debate the kind of food we're, we're providing. I agree. I just want to remind everyone that we just had asked to remove the word cafe from the design plan. So I just, we don't have a cafe. We're, the architects are gonna come up with a word with what, like a serving area or whatever. Um, okay. To, 59, room about World War One and World War II is part of collection. Um, is that special collection or just like all collections? Room, I, is that part of special collection? I think that's what that's supposed to say. We are not intending to provide a particular room dedicated to World War One and World War II. Uh, agreed. And, Sharon put as part of collection, but I think she means no dedicated room, part of special collections. What she means is that there will be material oh. about World War I and World War II throughout the library, some in the book collection, some in special collections. So I, I don't think we need to dwell a lot on this one. So, but I just, okay. 261, resident writers program with quiet workspace offices who don't have full-time faculty appointments. There will, uh, uh, agreed incorporated, there will be quiet study rooms. 263, children, children's, please add a door to the children's room. My toddler is constantly running away and making trouble, agreed, and being incorporated. 265, children's, foos, Ball table, a uh, maybe. Um, and it goes along with the next one, 266 children's game console, which is a maybe. 268, I'm concerned that the redesign will overwhelm the original building in the exterior view. And Sharon put, under the agreed category, there are design requirements. Um, what are we trying to tell the our designers with well, that? Well, the, the reality is that the addition can't be taller than the original building as per historic preservation requirements. And that's how the designers built the addition. So is an agreed, we send that to the designers and they know what it means. Thanks, yeah. George. 269, children's, space for children's plays and readings near the entrance, not hard to find. Um, and she put, it's being agreed and incorporated in the children's activities room, which is not near the entrance really, but it will be um, easy to find. 
uh, 270. Warm, homey feel of original library is my favorite thing. The 1990s edition, both design and function, is least favorite. And Sharon has agreed, and I agree. Um, I mean, I disagree with the comment that the design that that the design and function of the oh yes yes I'm sorry Ig ignore what I said I thought they were talking about the expansion yeah okay <laughs> and I um I think we're just sending that I mean the designers are trying to balance warm homey with you know modern function and design so I I think um the designers know what to do with that 272 access to rear entrance not easy from amity street especially at night in winter weather agreed uh, again going to the designers i mean i mean i think that's already in the in the works i'd be putting yeah. it in column d i agree and that would include like lighting requirements and better walkways 273 over next 50 years, we will, I think it's need to bring large items in, but not block access and services. Storage at ground level, small through narrow hall, please uh, consider, um, unclear. I think a lot of the hallways will be wider now than what is currently there. Um, so there'll be an improvement. I. I think the designers are already sort of incorporating this. I, what do I you agree. think, George? I okay. agree. Uh, 277, plants inside the Pelham Library, which George gave us some details so for why it would be a disagree. 278, permaculture and CSA tours. And agree, it's part of programming. 280, forest garden outside three plus levels for demonstrations can do with UMass, maybe. I mean, forest garden. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks, Greg. That's for the later landscape discussion. 284, uh, piano. Agree, need a new piano. Um, so I guess for the designers, we just want them to have an area where to put a piano, whether to be played or to be stored. Do you have any thoughts on that, George? Um, yeah, I believe the the design for the new large meeting room space has uh, adequate storage for the piano, like we currently do. Um, you know, as far as replacing the piano, that kind of gets into a programming discussion because. Yeah. Some people love having a, having a large piano. Other people think we can just make do with a keyboard. So um, I don't think that's something that needs to be dealt with in design as long as we have the adequate space. I like how Craig put it there, need storage space, because that's what yeah. the designers need to keep in mind. Okay, right. great, thank you. And our last one, 289, should not look like a hospital. I think we all agree to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Craig, uh, you'll um, prepare this and send this. Oh, to we'll go to the next. When is is it next Tuesday, twenty first? When is, the twenty first is the next uh, library building committee meeting. So, can you bring this to that on? Um, so Austin and George, do you want to vote on this and say this is what we like, or do we just want a recommendation? We'll send it forward we to should, the. We should just recommend, Christine, if it's okay with you, you, you yeah. see, we'll speak to this. You'll say this is what the design subcommittee recommends to the building committee, and we will, the building committee will look at it and decide whether or not it agrees. And I agree with Austin. Okay, great. So this is what we've got right now. And um, we'll send this forward, Craig, if you can bring it on next Tuesday, next meeting, Tuesday at 4.30. Um, and and that I, actually, I think it's, it's, I'll double check to make sure uh, that it's tidy and consistent, but um, then perhaps I, with your permission, I'll send it to Angela 
or I can just distribute it to the library building committee in advance so that everyone sort of has it and then yeah I'll bring the file to the meeting. That would be great. Again, I think it I'm sorry Christine go ahead. No go ahead go ahead Austin. Um, in general I don't know Angie what your preference is if you can get things to Angie so that you can put them in the our thing that would be great. In the packet. Did we already get the packet or can that be resent out Angie? I'm happy to resend it. I sent it right before this meeting, but I'm happy to yeah. resend with the addition. Great. All right. So Craig will get that to you. And I think it is helpful for everyone to take a look at them. Um, so Craig, when you, it, I don't know if we need to explain to people uh, like very briefly, but what they need to just focus, because this spreadsheet's really big. We want to just tell them like what lines or whatever to focus on. Do a nice big bold. And the NA designer is that, yeah. So just tell them like the first 46 or it'll probably be 47 after you resort because I know we have another one in there, but, and then yeah. the ones that they need to look at. Great. Um, okay, so I think we're, um, so, um, so Craig, I noticed somewhere it was written that we were gonna do another round of comments at the next meeting on the 24th, but we've, are, we've got a lot on the 24th and I don't think the next round of comments are time sensitive. What are your thoughts on that? Um, in, on one hand, it, I agree, there is a lot going on on the 24th, um, but on the other hand, I think it would be nice to be able to say, hey, we've gotten through, you know, the comments still keep coming in through kind of the backlog um, and at least reviewed them and decide and, and taken some decision, made some decision on them. Um, I, that, that's my thought is that, yeah, I, I could see it going either way. So if that's what you want to do, are they in, are you going to pull out the next group and send that to us? to look to discuss for so on the 24th next Friday what I would recommend let's see so in my previous ones that were not critical that's these uh, brown shaded items um, but as Alex mentioned in the uh, most recent outreach subcommittee as comments continue to come in and so yeah. if we get through say the backlog you know the, the rest of this list then each design subcommittee meeting maybe there is you know the first 15 minutes we talk about whatever comments have come in regardless of priority just you know so through approximately so i assume there's all, hundreds of them especially with all these outreach um events they're doing correct and um i think there were uh, it was over a thousand that Alex has collected. Yes. So again, I, I think what we ought to do, Christine, is we ought to just do what Craig has suggested, which is try to get through the backlog on the 24th, allocate some time in every design committee meeting, however many they come in, it, we, don't, we don't need to speculate about that, just we'll allocate some time in design committee meetings to review the comments, and then we can forward them on to the building committee and the building committee can forward them on to the to the, um, to the architects as necessary. I also think it would be really good, Craig, to, as you've done, to direct our attention, not just to the backlog, but first to the things that we really need to address, um, and then go through the rest of them as time allows. I think that makes sense in concept. Um, Perhaps if you know if there are only twenty five new comments in one meeting period, then I don't know that prioritizing them is important. I would say we just go through all of them. But yeah, if we get a large batch, over a hundred, let's say, then yes, I'd I'd be willing to prioritize and say, hey, these are the fifty seventy five that we should focus on, um, so as not to bog down design subcommittee meetings. So. Uh, I like I like the concept, and then we'll we'll sort of roll with the punches as as they come. Craig, how many brown ones are there? It's one forty five. Okay, so one forty five to yeah. two ten. All so right. 
yeah. that's not too bad. So we'll we'll put those brown ones in for the next meeting on the 24th. But I do want to bring up it when Alex, I wasn't at didn't see the last outreach meeting, but at our last uh, building committee meeting, I mean, she mentioned like over a thousand. So if we have how many on this list, like so there were, total? There were over a thousand, but I believe, let me see, I'm looking at my notes. There were 600, 467 as of Tuesday, there are 467 unique comments. And so that thousand includes people kind of, I think it's called a bump or a like. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, this is, I, I support this comment. So how many do we have total here? So on this sheet, we've got somewhere around so, 300. Okay. So there might be another 125, 150 or something. I just want to make sure if you can look at those and see if any of them are um, like schematic design sensitive, because maybe we need to stick those in on the 24th if we want to make sure that the designer gets them for consideration yep. before the end of schematic design and all those furnishings and outdoor we can do like figure out how to do it at the next couple of design meetings sure we'll do does that sound okay yep great all right so we'll watch for emails from you for our next homework to do um i'm going to move to uh item four topics uh not anticipated in 48 which we had um, Sharon at the beginning talk a little bit, give us an update on the uh, tablet situation and the schematic design. I have no other things. Craig, do you have anything else that popped up? I see Austin's got his hand up. Oh, I don't. Craig, take down your, please take down your oh. screen share. So one of the things that I just wanted to raise is a, just a, a brief reflection on the tour. Again, thank you, uh, Craig, for the film. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder whether or not uh, it can be, it is possible. Um, I noticed in the Holyoke Library, a rather stark divide between the old section and the new section in terms of what I would call architectural details. And I just want to put on the table for discussion whether or not it is possible to work with our architects to bring some kind of uh, architectural detailing that references the historic building into the new um, addition other than showing the exterior wall. So I, I just wanted to put, a, put that on the uh, table uh, for uh, further discussion at some point. Um, at the uh, Woburn Library, there is definitely a sharp transition from old to new. I mean, it's beautifully done but um, so on the 24th, when they come next, when F, uh, Feingold comes next week, can that be, can you put that on their list, Craig, to just talk about how they see the transition at a couple at the different spaces? Absolutely. I will say in person, the showing the original exterior of the Wilburn Library from the new space was actually pretty stunning. Um, yeah. Seeing it in yeah. person, you could immediately visualize what it will look like in the teen area where it's, show, you know, outside the teen area and the staircase where it's going to show the original building. You could really envision it seeing how they did it there. So, uh, yeah, I think I, um, it's, that's helpful. Uh, we saw that in the Holyoke Library as well. And I'm trying to just say one other thing. In addition to the wall, great, that's fabulous. Is there some way that some of the architectural detailing in the in the rooms can reference some of what's in the um, old old building, uh, in addition to the exterior wall, which I think is great? I will share that comment with um, the, the the design team. Right. And I just, again, want to thank Craig for uh, setting up all those tours and coordinating. It went flawlessly and um, I found it tremendously helpful and eye-opening to look at other libraries um, in both how it was designed and listening to the librarians talk about function. Um, so thanks, Craig. You're welcome. And, and uh, 
I'll move on to item five, which is the time where we open it to public comment. Uh, I only see two attendees. All right, so there's two attendees. If either of you would like to speak at this time, we will bring you into the meeting and you can ask your question or give your comment. So I'm not seeing hands, but you'd have to raise your hand. And I'll give it a second. And on that next meeting be next Friday at nine. And there's also a building committee meeting um, on Tuesday, next Tuesday at 4.30. All right, all right, I see no comments today. So I think we're done for the day. Good job, thank you everyone. Um, and thank you for everyone out there who is taking part in the comments and questions and feedback that we're asking the community to give us as we try to move forward in designing and building this new library. So that's it. Thank you all. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Angela. <laughs>